Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and I'm here to help you become an expert maths teacher so that all your children love maths and become fluent and creative with it. This is the first video on teaching maths to five-year-olds, which is the second year of formal maths teaching in England. It's year one and the first year was reception class and the videos for teachers of four-year-olds are already available on this channel. I'll be publishing a video every week at three o'clock British time and I'll be staying on year one until they're all done and then moving on to year two. In this episode I'll be explaining what expert primary math teaching is, I will tell you about what the videos for teachers of five-year-olds are going to be so you can find exactly what you're looking for and I will also explain about baselining which is assessing the children when they first come to you so that you can tell whether they know enough maths to be able to access this year. You can find out what it is they don't know and you can intervene to make sure they're ready to thrive this year if you find there are problems. So what is expert maths teaching? Well, in the last few years, most schools have brought in really detailed schemes of work with detailed lesson by lesson plans. And I've been into some of those schools and I've seen some excellent teaching going on, really great stuff from those schemes. But excellent teaching is not necessarily expert teaching. Expert teaching is when you deeply understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. So that if things go start to go wrong with your scheme of work, you know, maybe it's just not working for your kids, or maybe you've had a spate of illness and different children have been off at different th times, so everything's got a bit chaotic. If you're an expert teacher, you can adjust in real time and innovate to fix that because you just deeply know what's going on. So expert teachers can be teachers who work with a detailed scheme of work and profoundly understand it and adapt it to make it better than it would otherwise be. But they can also be teachers who work directly from the national curriculum. They write their own planning, which is usually quite brief because the essence of what they're doing is in their head rather than out there with some other experts. So not so much of it has to be written down. And at this point, I'll just briefly mention the Facebook group where I provide resources for people who want to plan directly from the English National Curriculum. You've got the curriculum as extracts and you get a term per page guide which links directly to it, which helps you get started with that and a little bit of advice on how to do that. And that's all available in the Facebook group, which is called Expert Primary Maths Teacher Planning. And you can download that, those resources for free and chat to other teachers who are using them. And it's the work of those expert teachers who plan for themselves that the training in these videos has come from. I spent the last five years working with them to learn to understand the essence of what it is they know and do. How it is that they can teach so efficiently that they can veer off the curriculum if they feel there's more important stuff to do today and just come back to it confidently. And they can do more than the curriculum demands, which seems impossible to most teachers because we have an exceptionally challenging curriculum here in England. And at first, it's not easy to see what is the essence of what these teachers do because the classrooms look very different. Sometimes the kids are outside all the time doing um, activities outdoors. Sometimes the teacher teaches from the front. Sometimes they're using a lot of continuous provision. And some, some teachers are absolutely passionate about using all natural resources and objects. Others go down the pound store and get glittery plastic treasure chests. And when you're watching all this, at first it's not easy to see what's so special about these teachers. But in essence, it comes down to two things. The first is that these teachers teach the structures and representations of maths before they teach maths methods. Now in a lot of schemes you teach a mathematical method and you add in apparatus to help the understanding of that method and that's a good thing to do but it's not quite the same although there is an overlap because a lot of the same apparatus is used as teaching structures thoroughly first. And the reason this matters is that when you teach the structures first, the procedures all pop into place. They make sense to the child 
and their learning of mathematical methods and procedures becomes much more efficient. It's where the time savings come from and it's why their learning is deeper and you have to go over it less because the maths is connected. They really understand it. And if they forget processes and procedures they've been taught, they can usually rebuild them in their imagination. And the second thing that expert teachers do really well is that they listen to children. Now that's a tricky thing to explain. It's about listening to the child, not listening for what it is you want to hear. And often maths teachers have clear ideas about how maths is done, or they've read some methods in their scheme of work that they're teaching the children. And when they talk to the children, they're really listening to know if the child has understood that method. And that is different to listening to what is actually going on in the mind of the child. If you've done teacher training, you, I'm sure you will have covered the idea that children are not empty vessels waiting there to be filled with knowledge. There's stuff in their minds already. And when you have that skill of listening to them and helping them to unravel their own thinking, much more powerful learning goes on because you start from where they are and you're able to take a journey to what it is you want them to understand rather than just trying to force what it is you want them to learn on top of that what's going on in their own mind without acknowledging it. It doesn't stick so well. You won't get such secure learning if you do that, if you listen for what it is you want instead of listening to what it is the child actually knows and thinks. And these two skill sets, teaching the representations first and listening to the child, they create a virtuous circle with each other. If you're listening to the child, you hear a real variety of mathematical methods, some of which you will never have known about before. And they help you construct the representations and the fundamental structures of maths yourself, even if you're not taught them as a teacher. And if you teach the structures and representations of maths first, when the child is trying to unpack their own thinking, they have a hook, a picture that will help them to do that and it will help you and them to take the journey from their thinking to your thinking and connect up all the different methods that are going on in your classroom. So the next five videos in this series really cover the five core structures of maths that you need to teach and ensure children understand in year one. In video two, we'll look at the part-part-whole model, which in underpins addition and subtraction. In video three, we'll look at the numbers to 20 as fives and ones. In video four, we'll look at the numbers to 100 as a linear sequence in blocks of 10. In video five, we'll overlay the number line onto that. In video six, we'll look at the 100 square. And in video seven, we'll look at individual objects and how we what we can do with those and how they translate into the other models that we've just explained. And in each of those videos, I'll also talk about techniques you can use to ensure you are listening to children rather than listening for specific answers. In video eight, we will look at the odds and ends of the number curriculum, which generally involves laying foundations for structures we're gonna teach in future years. In video nine, we'll look at the teaching of fraction, videos 10, 11 and 12 will be on the applied curriculum that's measure money shape position etc and in video 13 i'll talk about lesson planning and what goes on in the classroom and what goes on in, for different people involved in expert teaching and how all the dynamics of that plays out and how to manage it and then where people come to me and say rebecca you should have covered this I'll make collaborative videos as and when they come to me and say that and want to do that. Baselining. Year one is the second year of maths teaching in England. And because children are very young when they start it, it's not reasonable to expect that they've remembered everything from the previous year. And we teach it in a way which means they don't have to have remembered it all, but they need some basics. They really need to have a good understanding of the numbers to 10. 
And what that means, if you want to test it, is that if you say a number or if you show them a flashcard for a number, they can count out that many objects from a larger group and show you them. Or they can show you the right num correct number of fingers to represent that number. And similarly, if you show them some fingers or you show them some objects, they should be able to count them and name the number of objects up to 10 and or point to the correct digit card for it. If they may well not be able to draw those digits clearly yet and that doesn't matter. They should be able to count the numbers fluently up to and down back down from 10 and they should know one more and one less. They should also be able to have a go at counting up to and down from 20 even if they're quite shaky on it in the teen numbers they should have had some exposure to doing that and they should also have an idea of what addition is in that if you've got two small groups of objects they should know that when you're adding them you're putting them all together and counting the total the children who can't do that are going to need urgent intervention and of course you should first of all talk to their teacher from last year to find out what's going on for them and then you should work with your teaching assistant and that child's parents or whoever's at home for them to make sure that they get the intervention they need. And the most obvious intervention at home, one of the most powerful ones, is to play games. I still recommend Spotty Dogs, Ladybirds, great games. And I would also introduce Bus Stop. This box is coming apart here the moment that's a great one for filling up buses getting on and off the bus lovely game for that age you might have a child who will not sit still in which case you're gonna to have to build it into their physical activity their understanding of number just go and run around the hall four times of course you or any other adult involved with this child can go back to the series on teaching four-year-olds and I would prioritize looking at videos two three and four which will give you an understanding of the very basics of learning number, which could be really relevant here. So in quick review on this episode, expert maths teaching is about doing more than just following a scheme of work. It's about understanding what you're doing so deeply that you can flexibly adapt if things go wrong to make sure that all your children thrive. It's about making sure that children deeply understand the core structures of maths before you teach mathematical methods. And it's about making sure that every child is unpacking their own thinking and you're listening, truly listening to what is going on in their minds before you link what they're doing to what you're trying to teach them. You would have to do that all the time, but it's a skill you need, especially if that child is struggling. And that's what these videos will cover. So if you're interested, first of all, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Then you'll be able to find it again. Videos go out every Thursday at three. Please share it with other teachers. Don't have any resource to promote this, these videos in any way. They're totally reliant on teachers sharing them. So share it on your social media feeds and in any groups you're in, please comment on and ask questions on the video not just so you can get answers but also to boost the ratings of these videos so that other people find them and if you could just like the video it only takes a second that'd be great for the planning resources there's the facebook group which is expert primary maths teacher planning please donate to try and help to cover some of the costs of making these videos if you'd like to sponsor any of these videos, that'd be great. You don't get any editorial control, but I can um, give you credit. If you do great math stuff, then I'll certainly promote it anyway, because I do that. If you'd like to make a collaborative video, or if you'd like to sponsor this channel, please get in touch with me. My email address is rebecca at authenticmaths.co.uk. And thank you for watching and for your support. Have a great day.